level up your landing picture? So <clears throat> I'm going to let NBC News actually explain who Mike Johnson is. He's from Louisiana. People around the country are asking, who is Mike Johnson? <laughs> Good question. And indeed, many people are asking if hey, Mike Johnson has been uh, elected Speaker of the House. And they're like, who? Ma- yeah, Mike I mean, yeah. Bronson? Like, like May John? <laughs> like, uh, you know, vast swaths of the American public. Yeah. So serving fourth term, meaning he's a career politician. He's been in the House oh, for eight years. Bring it back. Now. I press the wrong button. Bring it back. People are asking oh, if 24 hours ago, he was little uh, known to vast majority. You got it? Yeah, let me get it. Uh-oh. Okay, go ahead. He was little known to... Career politician. Um, okay. s- s- swamp candidate, former House Republican, you know, vice chairman. He was one of the representatives that voted to overturn the results of the 2020 election. I don't even think yeah. that's legally possible, but they're going to try the... Yeah, any means necessary and that's why trump's lawyers are turning on him but that's it for another segment um former legal, senior legal counsel uh, for the religious liberty group alliance defense fund another one of these groups that likes to work in the shadows and that likes to bribe politicians so they can get legislation passed at the local levels and in, in rare instances at the federal level vast majorities of, uh, you know, vast swaths of the American public. He's the vice chair of the Republican conference, which is a leadership position that doesn't real, real bad guy. And now 24 hours later, he has become speaker of the house. So who is he? A few things to know about him. Mike Johnson has a solidly conservative voting record, scores very highly on the scorecards of right wing groups. He voted against uh, the recent. Be careful with the copyright of the music. Government oh no, this is stream errors music. It's not copyrighted. On, on oh, okay. He's an animated opponent of uh, legal abortion as well as LGBT rights. Introduced a number of bills to that effect. Yeah, the devil incarnate, you could argue. <laughs> Trump's approval with Donald Trump's approval, sort of. Trump said he wasn't endorsing Johnson before the vote, but said Republicans should just go ahead and elect him and get this done. And after he was uh, ultimately elected to, to the speakership, Trump put out a statement congratulating him. Uh, Johnson has also uh, gotten some criticism for his role in promoting conspiracy theories. Uh, and uh, Yeah, yeah, he, he's like pretty much QAnon. He, he's like, you know, very, very subtle QAnon. Mm. Election denial claims specifically. Tra- and he and he's in D.C. Like, like the whole idea behind QAnon. I, I don't get why these hardcore MAGA types, you know, sometimes endorse QAnon because they are the swamp. The idea behind QAnon is that, oh, well, the, the D.C. insiders are in it with the deep state. OK, uh, well, now that you're in Washington as a job professionally, yeah. OK, ex- expose it. Where is this whole, you know, deep state fiasco? I mean, I mean, Cawthorn said, oh, well, they, they invited me to a Cokefield orgy. Anyone could have fucking guessed that. Yeah. I want the proof <laughs> that underneath D.C. it's happening behind us. You, you know what the real yeah. thing, deep state is? Lobbying, yeah. corrupting, bribing politicians, yeah. uh, capitalists what? using the actual state. What's supposed what? to be the body of the people as an organizing committee for themselves? It's capitalism, guys. It's none of this, like, you know, satanic Jew cabal bullshit. It's not that, man. Yeah, what, what, what we're witnessing right now, um, Free, is that, um, you know how people have chronic disease and they have the end stage, like they have uh, stages? Mm-hmm. This is this is the Republican Party is at the end stage. Of, of, it's, no, it's not a political party. People, I've been saying this, like, for two, three years. It's, it's an insurgency, you know, like a, a rebellious uh, uh, body because it cannot win no more. Eventually, it's not going to win. Eventually, mm-hmm. they used to have the electrical college to f- fuck around with. They're losing it. And eventually, when they can't, when they can't win that, they can't win. Uh, they're not able to win like statewide uh, election, like a yeah. Senate or something like that. They're going to exactly. turn violent because um, what's so dangerous about the Republican Party is, I know people are going to think I'm overreacting, is, is that... Um, it's all white. They're not. They're not opening uh, opening up their, their 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 party to mix it up. You understand? Yeah, they're exclusionary at every turn. Yeah, so that is scary shit. Because once you have these people, you saw how they were acting within themselves. Even if they rule, they can't rule. They're not able to govern. They are uh, uh, um, they are uh, fragmented with different ideas. Like this fucking idiot here. He he said um. Um, democracy is messy. Yeah, you try to end it, by the way, my friend. Remember, you try to yeah. real democracy. Yeah. You try to yeah. end it. Remember, R- remember back um, in the two thousands yeah. to juxtapose America against yeah. the Middle East. Um, yeah. 
and, and you know how the Middle East was full of uh, dictatorships and you know yeah. the heavy the, these really heavy Islamic theocracies, which they put, which we put in power by the way broadly, but to juxtapose us against these you know unstable middle east dictatorships they would say yeah. the u.s is a burgeoning example of democracy our people have <laughs> representation the middle easterners have autocracies and that's yeah. not good which is why we need to invade iraq because something something you know really yeah, bad we, weapons. We, we, we gotta uh, make these people human <laughs> and, and yeah and, and here's the here's yet another contradiction among yeah. the infinite contradictions in american conservatism it's the most contradictory political ideology just short of maybe outright fascism which as a matter of fact that that's kind of what american conservatism that, has turned into yeah, yeah. so um it, they'll endlessly say to ju juxtapose us against other powers the u.s is a democracy then when it comes to like matters of the electoral college or voter suppression yeah. or you know the uh, reforming the senate They'll say, well, um, rights of the minority, uh, states' rights, uh, actually, the, the Electoral College serves as a balancing act. I mean, we're not even a democracy. We're a, a constitutional representative republic. Yeah. And I always ask them in that debate, what is a republic, guys? What yeah. is a republic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, infinitely contradictory. Th they want democracy except when they don't. Like they want uh, free markets except when they don't. They want small government except when they don't. When they don't, right. Uh, they, 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 argument that a lot of Republicans rallied around to object to certifying some pro-Biden electors. That's been a real focal point of, of the early criticism from Democrats. He also, back in, in the mid-November of 2020, promoted some conspiracy theories about uh, Hugo Chavez and Dominion voting system <laughs> uh, potentially rigging the election. Yeah, they didn't even know he was dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's well, dumb like, he, 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 he's been dead for what? They didn't, yeah, he was like dead 10 years. And like, oh, Hugo Chavez uh, tried to overthrow our election, really, from the cemetery? He died. Oh fuck. yeah, we were like his soul is possessing Maduro. He, Maduro he, was just he, like a zombified corpse. The problem you know is that uh, you know uh, before uh, people used to come to Congress, they would pick like a remember what they called the smoky room or smoky room that the the party used to pick the who's going to go to Congress. Right now, social media and, and TV and access to people, anybody could be a congressman. Ask uh, Lauren Boebert. Ask, Anybody uh, can be president. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, this is the whole idea. So we're, we're not getting the best of the best. We're getting all the, the, the people who could talk. If they talk crazy and start yelling and some of the deep state and all that stuff, they get elected and they come to Washington and they are more of an obstructionist or more of a rebellious or more of idiots. They, they have no ideology, like real conservative ideology that you could debate them on. You, you know what I'm saying here? Yeah. So what they're trying to do here, they, 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 they I, don't, I don't know, man. They have this romance. I call it the health of Skelter. You know, you know health of Skelter is that when Charlie Manson uh, tried to, uh, this idea of um, collapsing the federal government or uh, push America to become a failed state, then at the end of the day, they're going to come and save the, 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 the day. It's not going to happen like that. God forbid if the, if the United States ever fragments or becomes a failed state. Oh, God help us, God. It'll take a thousand years. To, it's not going to be put back together. Mm. This is the whole uh, shtick. Remember Charlie Manson? I, I call it the health of skill, the, you know, uh, uh, um, scenario. Even uh, like, you know, the old of America first. You know, with Charlie Manson wanted to kill that. When he would kill that lady, the Tate, uh, whatever her name was, to start mm. a race war. And he's gonna go in the desert. Then he's gonna come back and rule the white race. Whoa! All his uh, he was on LSD, but these guys, well, what are they on? I, I don't understand that. Uh, you understand? Unhinged. They, it's unhinged. They, yeah, they're making America weak. They're making democracy weak. People uh, are losing faith in, in our democratic process and in our civilian government. And I blame the Democrats too. Mm -hmm. uh, sooner or later, free the military is gonna look beautiful to us. We're gonna ask for the military to take over like ten years from now. We're gonna say, guys. Just take over, man. These guys can't get it right. Man. Just, yeah, yeah. Restore you know, some sense of, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, the they're going to take it over because we, they, they're going to make it easy for them because mm. uh, they're going to lose the legitimacy uh, or credibility in the eyes of the public. And after a while, if God forbid, you have a crazy general or, or a guy who has, you know, you always got to get a crazy one here and there. Look at Mike Flynn. He was at the top of the top. He was like the head of uh, of intelligence in the, in the army, of hold the, the military service. So he's like one day, like, okay, guys, send a couple of tanks to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, told Joe Biden to go to sleep. Uh, we're going to take over for a while and we set this shit straight. Because you have to understand the military has a life of its own. They're not going to surrender and give the country 
to the crazies because they're making a lot of money the industrial uh the military complex they're making money everybody's making money there's so much corruption if these guys break the country a, a lot of people are gonna lose a lot of money in the united states so uh it's scary i'm gonna be honest with you free um mm -hmm. you know i have all, we have our family I'm, I'm, i'm the only idiot we all have our passports ready to run to canada or something in case this shit that hits the fan because i i think we're heading the wrong way you know Mm -hmm. and, and uh trump is going to go to jail eventually yeah, go ahead Defra. i don't want to take over the whole show but yeah yeah. Think, yeah yeah but i'm saying yeah this we'll, we'll finish this video up then we'll uh, give our closing okay. thoughts about uh, yeah, yeah yeah go ahead mike johnson credited at the time and finally he's only been in congress for about seven years or so he's a fresh face wow. not very experienced and uh it turns out that's exactly what republicans wanted Thanks for watching. Stay updated. Yeah, they, they don't really want, you know, an experienced speaker candidate. So um, I, I think I saw MSNBC do an interview with Adam Kinzinger, who is yeah. um, this Republican representative, yeah. you know, moderate Repu Republican, but, you know, yeah. like like the Reaganite era Republican uh, yeah, yeah. would be nowadays. I mean, keep in mind, like Mitt Romney was on the Republican presidential ticket back in 2012, and now they yeah. call him a rhino, which, you know, just goes to show <laughs> how far they yeah, shifted yeah. to the right. Yeah, yeah that's but, right. The thing is, he, he called Mike Johnson, like he, he said, Mike Johnson was started out as this, you know, moderate conservative, then lead hardcore into MAGA once it became politically viable in the state of Arizona. And n now what Kinzinger thinks his strategy is, is he's trying to position himself uh, as, you know, like, a, a, a hero to the MAGA types. Like, he wants to ingratiate himself with the QAnon types and the hardcore MAGA types. You know, he wants this aesthetic of draining the swamp when, you know, the, the MAGA candidates, they're just as swampy as yeah, anybody swampy. else. Okay. I mean, like, um, offshoring increased under Trump's administration, even though his campaign was pretty much all about trade. Right. Um, a good chunk of the wall was, you know, like replacing already existing border infrastructure. Not only that, you know, Biden is, is kept on building it now. Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel like Mike Johnson, as per the estimates of these moderate Republicans, he's just a wave rider. He's just yeah. a wave rider. Now, I, I feel like the current wave is you know, this right-wing populism, this MAGA populism, and it's yeah. dying off. Um, I feel like the next wave in conservatism may be like this neocon foreign policy, but like it, it's still, you know, unpopular. Um, obviously, like with, with Israel, you know, th these ideas are reinvigorated with the public said, but, but we don't know where conservatism will go. Yeah. What I want to demonstrate is that Mike Johnson is a wave rider, and I, I have no idea where you know the house is going to go after this they might vacate him yeah. because you, you know he wants to compromise here or there but he has to compromise because the the, the democrats have the senate and they have the, the executive branch so he has to do something mm -hmm. if not it's going to be just a frozen uh, uh a mexican standoff yeah absolutely well this is the antichrist they picked the antichrist i mean he, he's against everything that, that we hold dear he can say he's against personal rights for women uh to control their own uh body whatever it is they want they do they do and there's a lot of things and he's an anti-democrat he signed over he tried to overthrow the the, the election of the united states of america unbelievable shit. he, he should not he, yeah. he, he shouldn't be elected to anything I, i don't understand what these motherfuckers are thinking man yeah you know? Mm -hmm. exactly and you know i i actually saw this piece by a youtuber named telltale um okay. owen morgan he, he covers cults and he covers maga of yeah. QAnon how Christianity has like infiltrated American politics and he covers the cultiness behind a lot of these Christian fundamentalist movements. And he actually theorizes that as per um, yeah. the, the old, you know, Christian description, Jesus's description of what the antichrist was, Trump might actually be the antichrist, which um, I, I don't know. I'll go over that video myself or we'll play it sometime I later think, uh... on the stream, but you know, there is very compelling evidence very compelling evidence but i'm gonna tell you something. i think trump is finished i think trump you know why he's finished because um there's no reaction no more like remember when he first they first searched mar-a-lago everybody went crazy oh how, how they could do it now he every day he you see what they do they doing it slowly so people come so because they're normalizing it in the head of the megas now he's going to court every day he's being punished uh penalized for being a douchebag every day and you know he's, and he's in new york city right now because he's about to lose everything he has that's why he's there every day it's all about money 
So eventually, um, by the time the third or fourth try is going to come, he's going to be degraded or he's going to be forgotten. All the, all the media has to do is just, just ignore him. 